All right, so this is Hay Fever. This um, this is a 2D platformer. Uh, you got actually ooh, a bunch of language options. I didn't notice that. And you can control, you know, the individual sound effect and music volume. So that's that's cool that you can do that. Anyway, that's that's the extent of the options. No controller options. No uh, in-depth display options. That's pretty much it. You can of course view the credits from the title screen, and you can just quit to your PC if you know you're playing on the PC version. I imagine console version of this won't have the exit option. But let's go ahead and go just right into uh, my beaten game here. Not necessarily completed. Man, these profile pictures are just weird. Anyway, we are going to go ahead and start... Um, yeah, this is actually the very first level, so let's go ahead and demonstrate that. The story of this game is that you are a postman and uh, you're supposed to go deliver these letters that... Well, you deliver mail and a handful of letters that you were delivering got uh, spread by the wind or something. And um, also, you happen to have a cold. So you can just uh, sort of press um, on an Xbox controller. I'm pressing X to, um, to, to do my jump, to do the extra jump. So you got the A button, which is your normal jump, and you have a little bit of variable height with that. As you can see, I'm hitting below this spot, and if I hold it, I can go a little bit higher. So, while there is a, a big difference in uh, your jump height, if you do hold the button, you do go a little bit higher. And um, there is no run button, so I don't believe there is any way to jump higher by uh, moving at the same time. And these, I guess, whatever these things are, yeast or something. It'll fill up that meter at the bottom there, as you see. If it goes beyond the three, then it'll just automatically shoot me out wherever I'm going. And as you can see right there, you also bounce off of walls. I really, wait a minute. No, I don't know. It's, as you could see there, I like barely moved at one, one point. I guess it's how far away you are from the wall that determines how far you bounce. Uh, anyway, that looks like nothing. But that is a ton. Anyway, that bounce really, I think it gets in the way more than anything else. More than uh, it's ever like a useful thing. In fact, I don't think there's ever really a good useful bounce off the wall. It's mostly just uh, inconveniencing. But yeah, that is the basics of the controls. That is a mailbox, that is a checkpoint. So if I were to die by running into a bee, I will restart the checkpoint. So that's handy to know. And what we are doing here is, this first level, we're just looking to uh, beat it. There's another checkpoint. And as you can see up there, which I just missed, that is a letter. And at the bottom of my, at the bottom of the screen, underneath that meter, you got one letter and like two blanks. That means there is only one letter to get in a in this level. Other levels will have two, maybe three letters to get in a single level. Level, but it tells you right there um, how many letters there are, and you can usually get them in order to uh, let you know if you missed one or not. And then right now we can choose the next level, which is the next day, retry from the beginning, which is X, and then jump to the level select, which is the calendar. Let's go ahead and start the next level. So this time I'll go a little, a little bit faster here. So here's a checkpoint, there's a letter. That was a little bit of stutter on the screen. This game does have a little bit of stutter problems now and then. So yeah, there's that, and I got all the letters, and finished the day. So yeah, there are seven days in a week, of course, so as you go through the game, you can expect to go through um, seven levels before it will sort of tally up your progress. I mean, it'll save, of course, at, on each level. 
and there are plenty of obstacles to overcome. This game, it starts out really easy like this, but it, it ramps up the difficulty pretty fast. There will be levels where you have to, um, you're like timed to do something. Not like a timer shows up, but there's something chasing you very often is the case. Oh yeah, also you can drop through platforms. So know that. Ooh. Remember, uh, you can't go above the three or it'll just automatically shoot you. So you gotta be careful about that. And each world, I guess we should demonstrate that next. Each world sort of has its own gimmick. I mean, this world is showing me these, um, I don't know what you call them, dust things. They just, um, they allow me to sneeze and blow myself farther away than a normal sneeze does. That's sort of like the main teaching instrument in this world, I guess you could say. Any secrets over here? No? There are, I guess, secrets abounding in this uh, game. I do kind of want to just run through the first week real quick like I'm doing. What level are we on? That doesn't say, unfortunately. I think it said at the end of the last level we beat, but... Oh yeah, and there's this cat at the bottom of the screen right now that just shoots out more of that dust stuff. I also get confused in these early levels, like, which is the main path? Like, is that the hard path down there? Or is this the hard path I'm on right now? I don't even recall. Oh man, I hate that wall bounce. It just kills me more often rather than helping. It hurts more often than it helps. Oh, looks like I took the easy way. See, that I thought well, I was taking the hard way, but as it turns out, that was the easy way. Can't. Also, the sneezing, it has its own set distance. Like, the jump you can, you can make shorter or higher a little bit based on uh, how long you hold the jump button down, which is a good uh, common platforming mechanic. That's in a lot of uh, platforming games, is that you can have variable jump height. That's usually a good thing. Um, but in this case, uh, your, your double jump is just is tied to a different button, and it's a sneeze. And I guess I didn't mention this earlier, but that circle at the bottom of the screen, when that, um, after I sneeze, it goes blank, and then when I can sneeze again, it'll fill up. It'll fill up automatically, you know, if I hit the, if I touch the ground, of course. But um, other than that, you can sneeze multiple times in the air. It just uh, depends on, I guess, how much air time you have. Like that. And then these red blobs, they simply automatically shoot you in the direction that you're holding. So if I hold left, it'll shoot me left. If I hold right, it'll shoot me right. Up, goes up. Of course. Um, however, while I have um, the the screen sort of pauses like right as you get in it, just for a second, which would make me think it pauses so you can put in an input on what direction you want. But no, that's really not your input when you first touch it is the direction you're going to go. So even if you change direction in that short pause you're not going to um, change direction. Also, diagonals are a thing. And that's kind of another, like, common uh, problem or difficulty with the controls, is that uh, there are a lot of diagonal challenges. Like, 
a lot of the time you do have to hold a diagonal direction to get through something in order to not die. And if you play a lot of platformers, you'd know um, diagonal is a pretty tough direction to hold. Now, if you hold a, if you press, if you use a D-pad, like uh, most uh, probably 2D platformer people will say they use over a joystick, over a, uh, not joystick, analog stick, is because uh, this game also controls only in, for in the eight directions also. Like, you can use a analog stick and you're only going to move in uh, those four, those eight directions that it registers. So like you're not gonna be able to hold a direction that's other, a direction other than those eight directions up, down, left, right, and diagonals. So, and then diagonals on a D-pad, on a four-directional pad, that is also difficult because you gotta hold two buttons down at once, basically. And so that's just uncomfortable. And if your D-pad isn't um, the best quality, if you don't have like the best controllers, then you could be holding, you think you're holding two directions down, but you're just holding one and you go like straight up if you think you're holding up left like I am. So that's a problem. And then if you use the analog stick, because you know, it's easier on your thumb than holding two directions on a D-pad at once, uh, you're gonna get messed up because if you don't hold it in the exact upper left corner on a diagonal, you're not gonna be going diagonal either because you can't feel what direction you're holding on a... You can't feel if you're holding down a diagonal on a analog stick. You can... It all... Every direction feels the same on an analog stick. Like, if you hold the controller just, like, slightly different angle, then your thumb is going to be at a different angle. So there is just a lot of very technical skill that the game asks of the player. I was holding right as I went into that red glob and I rotated the stick upwards, but I didn't get there fast enough and you saw I went diagonal. I was holding up by the time I started moving out of that red, but uh, you gotta be holding the direction you're gonna go before you hit the red. Otherwise, it's just gonna throw you off. And then, of course, holding a D-pad diagonal. There are so many diagonals. So many diagonal movements in this game. If you hold diagonal on a D-pad for a long time, it really hurts your thumb. That's really all I'm trying to say. Also, a note on the letters. Now, I can't really demonstrate it here because I've gotten all the letters before. Whoa, it's still gone. That's weird. I was going to say you can grab a letter and like go back to a checkpoint and like even though the checkpoint won't register itself again it'll still save your letter so the game is nice in that way that you can actually reuse the same checkpoint to save letters if you collect them i don't know if that's um intentionally designed that way but it does work all right week one complete as you can see it gives you like a recap of the letters you collected and you can continue, which will just take you back to the map screen here. This is the calendar, which is like the level select. And uh, let's go ahead and jump over to the second portion of the game. As you can see, there are the four seasons, of course. Winter and spring is the last one. Let's go ahead and check out fall, a random... Well, I haven't gotten all of them here. So let's go ahead and see Oh boy, I think I know what's going to happen. I think this is going to be a moving screen level. Yep. Those um, electric things over there, they are moving. Which means I have no time to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing here. Turns out, I gotta get these pumpkin head guys to throw over here to break these boxes. I mean, granted, this is like level 10. I might have seen these mechanics earlier in the world, I guess, I could say, if um, I didn't start level 10. So maybe I would have known what to do already, but still, this is one of those. Another thing that's um, a common hatred of 2D platform gamers is moving stream levels. And that's basically what this is. Well, while I'm not 
timed on how quickly I can move forward, I definitely have that thing creeping up on me behind. So I'm still, I'm not, it's not the same as a moving screen level, but I'm still timed if that makes sense. And who likes being timed when they're playing a game? That's the letter I missed. Man, and of course, uh, this is one of those one-hit kill games. Not that that's a critique, that's just sort of the uh, category we're in. So yeah, there's a lot of precision platforming. Oh man, I don't know. I guess I shouldn't even keep trying for that letter. I feel like I could get it if I kept trying, but I don't want to bore you with my uh, failed attempts. And yeah, bouncing off walls, that is something I really, it's really uncomfortable to have to deal with it. Oh boy, it's going to get worse. Also, if you saw there, it's very common that uh, you'll sn you'll get your sneeze off. As you get your sneeze off, you know, you got a little bit of uh, mucus that's coming out, I guess. And very often, this is a mechanic that's uh, introduced in the second, uh, maybe it's introduced sooner, but those purple things, they, um, they transform you into this balloon thing that you gotta move around with. So, um, shoot. So yeah, I'm timed here because I gotta get through here without getting hit by that thing. And this is essentially a moving screen where it slows my progress down, but this is sort of the difficulty of uh, moving forward here. And then that is the level. I can go over here to get the letter, and now I'm done. Oh yeah, I was going to say your mucus as it comes out. I, it happens to me several times a play session where I feel like, okay, so this is an interesting level where it's just a single screen. There are a few of these in the game where it's just a single screen level with a high challenge. Um, so there's a few parts in the game where my mucus will come out because I'm trying to jump, but I'll die instantly like like um oh shoot i completely missed the key down here so yeah if uh the hay or the i don't like what call the yellow stuff hay it's not the dust will increase my inflation time I can, of course, just sit here and farm it if I really want to, because it respawns. Oh man, Dag! I tried to go straight right, and I was using, and I'm using the D-pad right now, but my thumb slipped up, and I went diagonal. So here's here's a situation where analog control would actually be a lot better because because I've only got the eight directions. So if I just tap, you know, in an angle, a diagonal, it's going to change the hurt box on my character a lot because a diagonal movement is going to be a big turnaround on my character. Where if I was using an analog control, you know, I could move slightly into a into any direction and it would just be so much easier to control, I feel. If we're going to get into, you know, movement like this, like, why not give me 360 degree movement? Why, why limit me to just eight directions when I've got this kind of movement? Oh, that's a, that's an enemy down there. Oh man, that did not work out well. So you can see what 
what the gist of the game is like. Um, each world introduces its own kind of stuff. Uh, winter is actually kind of like a space... Space theme? Oh man, here's another example. There's a bunch of these levels where you're basically timed because you've got something following you. And I just picked this little at random. You've got this stuff following you, so you can't just take your time to go through the challenge. You also have to be a speedrunner because uh, the game's not going to wait for you to practice a particular point of the level. You just got to move, and you got to move fast. Let's go ahead and check out the final one level of the final theme, Spring. Spring actually introduces something that's very interesting. Um, this isn't it. This actually shows up a lot sooner in the game, but this shiny blue stuff, bubbly stuff, is actually an infinite jump. So I can, or infinite sneeze, I guess. I can keep sneezing as much as I want as long as that meter stays full. Oh, that looks like a secret up there. I don't know if I can... Uh, Look at that. Uh, I guess I've done it before? No, I did not do that before. I came from the right. I haven't gone through that spot to get that letter before. As you could, as you may have noticed, I had gotten that letter before, but it wasn't from going through there. It was from going the normal way and then turning back around. Whoa, that was close. This is the thing that's really interesting about this world, is that it introduces this sort of sticky wall sticking thing also there's a a jump to it so what i did to get the letter the first time i played this was i grabbed this came over here grabbed the letter and then i went back just like that so there's like a little bit of an exploit i guess you could say so yeah, I'm really torn on this game whether I should use like D-pad or analog stick. I switch back and forth all the time. These flying sections really make me wish there was analog control, but there's only eight directions available. And there's a lot of diagonal stuff, which makes me feel like it's more difficult because it's only eight directional control with all the diagonal challenge like this right here. It's asking you to hold... If you're using a D-pad, it's asking you to hold two directions a lot in this game. And that just makes it very unpleasant to play because your thumb's going to get really tired from holding two directions a lot. And then if you use the analog stick, it's very imprecise in, you know, if you're going diagonal or not. But you can uh, change direction in the air a bit. Ah. Uh, but uh, the thing I kept forgetting to finish is that um, it feels a lot like when I'm trying to jump, obviously there's a secret down there. When I'm trying to jump, sometimes it's like close to jumping above a spike and my snot will come out as if I had pressed the button, but then I'll get hit by the spike as if I didn't press the button. And there was that one moment, I'll put it on screen here, where that happened already during this playthrough right now. Um, so yeah, what's interesting about this final world is this sticky thing. I actually really like the sticky thing. Um, it's, it takes a little bit to get used to the control. I am out of time, so I fail on that end. But also, there is a... If you hold down the sneeze button, you can you can run as this. So normally there is no run button, but when you have this and you hold down the sneeze button, you can run. And then as you go off of uh, off walls at speeds, I think they could have made a whole game based off of this kind of control because oh no. 
just a bit too slow. Because this is like some of the most interesting stuff. So really, I guess I rate the second and third world as being extremely tough for the annoyances of uh, timed levels, moving screens, things like that without having more interesting mechanics, but uh, when you get to this, this changes up the level design a lot more. Let's see if I can just uh, get over there real quick. Oh. And um, yeah, there's if they can make a whole game based off of this wall sticking stuff, it's very interesting. Um, there is a sort of... You only hold left and right when you're doing this, too. So, you kind of... That's what you have to get used to, is that... Um, like, I'm still holding right right now, and now I'm holding left. going Holding left, even though I'm going right, holding left. So, yeah, it does depend on, like, what direction you're facing when you get on there. Whether or not uh, it goes that way. And then, if you're running... Also, you stick to walls. Something to note. I just want to talk about this all the time. Um, if you're holding the run when you go off a corner... Oh, man. See that? There's... The controls are finicky. Not Even though I like this part of the game, the controls are finicky throughout the entire game. That if you're walking, you'll cling to the ledges. Where if you're running, you'll shoot off the ledge while you're holding that. Oh yeah, this part. So this is this is the end of the level here. This um, I'm waiting for that guy to finish his hopping, but I can't run right now because I'll fling off of this thing. There we go. Oh. So, yeah, there were a lot of sections in Worlds 2 and 3 that really tested my patience, basically. This last world was probably one of my favorites. Um, because before this, I, there was a lot of frustrating parts in this game. Um, and then after you beat the game, there is like an extra world that opens up with really hard levels. I can't even get past the first one. I will admit I can't get past this. Um, and it looks like, based on the number of letters you collect throughout the game, will allow you to unlock more of these levels. Obviously, you still have to beat them in order. Like, I have more than 200 letters, but I can't unlock the second level unless I beat the first one still. Um, and there is no unique theme to this world that I've seen. Um, like the first level. Oh yeah, there are cutscenes in the game, like just like little dialogue boxes. Um, so yeah, there are... There is no unique theme to this world that I've seen. It's just... Um, it's probably just all of the world themes that are throughout the game. But yeah, I can't get past this first level. And really, this game is hard. That's really, I guess, the main thing I want to get across is that this game is hard. Uh, I've played other, plenty of other 2D platformers. I don't know if I need to qualify myself or anything. Um, but yeah, I overall I didn't. I that's there's there it is again. My snot came out. It hit the ground, but I still got hit by spikes as if I hadn't gone anywhere. And if I had jumped straight down like that, it wasn't because I was holding down. Because if I hold down and, and do that, it goes like that. But if I'm holding any other direction, it'll go straight down. So yeah, I believe I just got robbed there. Because... Um, something about the timing of when you die and when you can jump, if there's like some overlap or something, that overlap needs to be removed. Like, you can't be able to jump and die at the same time. 
there needs to be like a priority change there or something. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm just gonna keep on running myself into the same walls if I keep trying while I'm talking here. But yeah, um, the game... It's fine. I... I wouldn't um, probably recommend it for myself again. Like if I didn't know what this game was and I was talking to myself from like the future or something or the past and I was gonna tell myself, hey, should I get this game? I probably wouldn't because it's just so hard. I mean, I beat it, yeah, clearly, but um, not just that it's hard, but it's frustrating because of the mechanics and the faults I find with it. Um, and the, the level design. There's a bunch of just nitpicky problems I have with it, which is why I wouldn't recommend it to myself. But, I mean, if you're interested in, in just having really hard 2D platformers, then sure, go for it. Um, you can decide for yourself if the things I've mentioned are deal breakers or not for you. And then, uh, if you have any other questions about the game, you can ask in the comments on this video. I'll answer onto them. And then, uh, if you've played this game before, uh, let me know if, say in the comments below if there's something I missed that people should know about that I didn't mention. And if you haven't played the game before, like I said, if you know, if you have any other questions about the game, let me know. And um, other than that, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Also, the boss of the game is shown in the game trailer on Steam page.